got a huge response, of course, and so we got tweets and emails and things that we didn't get to on the air. So I just wanted to ask you a couple of these. Um, David in Northern Virginia um, wrote in to say, well, while I'm happy about the improvement in test scores, proficiency is not enough if we want our children to thrive in the 21st century. How to shift the focus from proficiency to advance? Well, I think David is absolutely right. In fact, um, one of our goals is around doubling the number of our students who are advanced, and in fact, we saw great progress towards that goal this year. Um, we've also put in gifted and talented programs in a number of our schools. Um, we've put advanced reader modules. We're actually paying attention um, to our highest performing kids so that we can push them further, but we're also trying to get our proficient kids to that advanced rate as well. And we got a tweet from Keith um, who says, how does the chancellor respond to professional educators who know standardized tests to be ineffective measures of student skill mastery? How else are we evaluating kids? Oh, I mean, we evaluate um, our success in multiple ways. So first of all, I think the most important uh, way that we evaluate kids is in the unit tests and the weekly tests that teachers um, provide them with every week. Teachers are seeing progress. In fact, um, on our evaluation tool, we actually have teacher assessed student achievement where the teacher and the principal sit down, agree on the goals uh, or the measures on which they're going to um, assess student achievement, and then we actually track that and it counts towards teachers' evaluation. So only 13% of the of the teachers in our district are actually in tested grades and subject areas, so we must have multiple measures for our young people. Mm -hmm. Um, and Sam in DC um, says, I was shocked to read that, that the, at the end of the school year that elementary students lagging the most would not be offered summer school. Have you really given up on failing seven and eight-year-olds? Sam, I think you misunderstand. Um, we really, uh, I think summer school has been a place where we haven't seen the kind of movement, academic movement, that we wanted to see for a number of reasons, and one of which is because we are trying to do too many things. And so we really focused on developing a program that would serve um, the children and actually move them academically and so we targeted our invitations to summer school to make sure that we got to those children first um, and then we in fact opened it up to everybody else and so um, lots of young people uh, are in summer schools and I've been visiting summer schools over the last week and there are amazing things going on. Um, and his a piece of this is uh, now we read that your targeted summer school didn't work because many seats went empty. Oh, every year, every year seats go empty with summer school. In fact, that's part of the reason why we ratcheted down the number this year. We have three or four years of data, um, which shows us that um, how many kids come to summer school. But um, as I said, I've been visiting summer school all week. We realigned summer school to effectively continue the school year, and um, I wouldn't say that our targeted summer school failed at all. In fact, I think next year when I'm sitting in this chair and you're asking, to what do you attribute these gains? <laughs> I'll be able to say in part because of the targeted summer school program that we ran this summer.